In this video, I will show you how to use libraries and why it is a superpower of the Arduino ecosystem. First, what are libraries? Libraries are pre-written code that you can use in order to achieve your goals faster. Because someone already solved a similar issue in the past, you can use this code now in your project too. There is a huge library of libraries. <laughs> so if you press this icon, the library manager will open. And now we can use libraries, for example, timer one. And you see a small description. You can select a version. Usually you can pick the latest version if there is no issue with it. And if you press more info, um, just don't press it. Let's install. As you see, this was super fast. Arduino now downloaded all the code that is included in the library called Timer1, and we can now use it. And if you're not sure how Timer1 works, you can look at example codes. At the bottom, you will see all the libraries that you install. So right now I have one custom library and that is called timer1. Now we'll open the interrupt example and we'll have a look. At the very top of our file, we see a preprocessor directive called include. And this gives us access to everything that comes with the library. Now, in this case, this, for example, is timer one. We initialize a timer one and we attach an interrupt service routine called blink LED. And now we have this interrupt service routine that is called every 150 milliseconds. And we still have our loop that runs all the time. And what you can do now is you can have blocking code inside of the loop using delay functions. The loop will be interrupted every 150 milliseconds and it will jump into the blink LED function. Now let's run this code and see what happens. As you can see, the LED is blinking and inside of our loop, we send back how often it blinked. If we change a variable inside of our interrupt service routine, this variable needs to be defined as volatile. So blink count in this case is a volatile unsigned long variable. This volatile keyword is important because otherwise it could happen that the compiler removes the functionality. The compiler always tries to optimize your code and it sees that the blink count doesn't really change inside of the loop. So it would assume maybe that's a constant. In this case, it's not a constant because we're changing it inside of our interrupt service routine. So we will define it as volatile and then the compiler will not try to optimize it. As I already told you, our loop will be interrupted. So whatever is currently executed will be interrupted and we jump out of our loop into this interrupt service routine. And by doing so, we interrupt whatever is currently done. And this can be dangerous when it comes to copying the values. For example, here we copy the blink count into blink copy. Now, why is this dangerous? Let's assume that blink count is at the absolute maximum. It is just one, 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 one. And now we started copying this one, 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 one. And while we copy byte by byte of this huge unsigned long variable, the interrupt occurs and now it overflows and it goes to zero. And now we continue copying, but now it's zero. And so we have half one, 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 and the other half is zero, 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 and we get a completely different number. 
So this has to stay in this code. Now, talking about libraries, there are also built-in libraries. They are here all the time. If you install the library, you can also find it in your file system. Under documents, Arduino libraries. And every library comes with a folder. And inside of this folder, you can actually look into the source code of the library. And you can also find the examples and sometimes some documentation. Sometimes you don't find the library that you're looking for inside of the library manager. In this case, you can download the zip file of the library. Let's say I'm looking for a temperature sensor called DS18B20. And I find this library here on GitHub. I have no idea if this works, but you will find a lot of libraries on GitHub. And most of the time you will find releases and you can download it. And macOS always extracts it, which in this case we don't want. We want the zip file, so I will compress it again. And now what we do is we go to sketch, include library, add zip library. And then you can select this zip library here. And it will install the library. And now if we go to examples, you have this new library right here. If this video was helpful, please like and subscribe to this channel if you're ready to dive deep into the world of Arduino. Thank you for watching. See you in the next lesson.